four warriors in a tumultuous lineup going head to head. Formidable opponents battling not only against each other for glory, but also the most infamous wave of all time, the Banzai Pipeline, a wave of consequence. Risk versus reward, ultimate beauty and danger. Welcome to the Proving Grounds. This is the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro, and you are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. You got a little, you can use much more. Watching the Vulcan Pipe Pro 2020. All right. Aloha, everybody. I am your host, Sal Masakella, and allow me to welcome you to paradise, known as the Seven Mile Miracle. This stretch of the North Shore of Oahu is a surfing mecca, and the definitive break, the most famous wave in the world, the Banzai Pipeline, also known as Pipe. Every winter for four days, Pipe specialists converge from around the world to compete at the Volcom Pipe Pro in the hopes of raising this, the prestigious Warrior Helmet Trophy. The unique aspect of this competition is that it is a part of the qualifying series or a QS event. And in 2020, it has been elevated to a 5,000 event. Valuable points in pursuit of making the elite World Championship Tour. So, 144 competitors, including local pipe specialists, that call this wave their home break, and competitors on that Elite World Championship Tour. Names like Seth Moniz, Connor Coffin, and defending Pipe Pro champion, Jack Robinson. Day one started with classic pipeline conditions, eight to 12 foot waves with a northwest to west swell direction, light variable winds, and clean glassy conditions. But the Banzai Pipeline is much more complex than just what we see above the water. Let's take a look at what makes this iconic location the ultimate surfing proving grounds with the DJI Course Preview. The definition of pipeline is the barrel. What are the factors that lead up to great pipeline? First of all, swell direction. Second, local winds, and three, the dynamics of how the beach is actually shaped. You look at the North Shore, it's kind of, it's shaped kind of like a catcher's mitt, um, and it's just facing directly in all that energy that the North Pacific is generating. Prevailing wind is offshore, meaning that it's clean the majority of the time, uh, and then it's got the underwater topography that focuses those swells in such a way that you get just hollow, barreling waves, and perfect waves when everything lines up. The wave is so powerful and so fast and so fierce, and it's breaking over such a shallow reef, you know, anything can happen. This place claims lives. It is a giant barrel that breaks over basically dry reef. If you fall, things are gonna go wrong really fast. So it's that thin line of never overcoming Mother Nature, but becoming one with it. And that's what brings everybody back. It's forever changing. There's forever new people coming in. There's new swells. There's always that uncertainty, you know, that keeps you hungry. It's like no other barrel that you can get. How do the waves reach pipeline? Well, look to the left of your screen. That purple energy is from storms thousands of miles away. That energy hits pipeline out of that west-northwest. You couple that with nice light east-northeast trade winds, perfect conditions at pipe. And how do you score points at the Vulcan Pipeline Pro? Well, the judges are looking for you to get inside of the barrel, inside of the tube. The longer you disappear from view, the more points on offer. Couple that with a clean exit and you are laughing. But really important is also critical entry, how you get into the wave. Uh, 
Uh, the judges are looking for that, that and the opportunity for aerial maneuvers on the back side of the wave, and you can get yourself into that excellent scoring range. But we gotta remember, underneath this, a very dangerous reef. For more on safety here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro, we'll send it over to Tina Dixon. And new this year, are they are providing helmets for the surfers. Now, this is an option if they want to wear them. It's not mandatory. But in the past here at Pipeline, we have seen some heavy wipeouts. And the reality is, yeah, that's the possibility to hit your head on the reef. So this just adds that extra level of safety and protection. And what's interesting, it's the younger generation that are wearing these more and more. It's incredibly lightweight high performance, and some surfers are saying they wish they had this option years ago. Kaipo, what do you got for us? Day number one at the Volcom Pipe Pro. We start out with 144 surfers. In this first round, it's made up primarily of surfers representing Hawaii. A lot of pro juniors, 18 and unders in this first round. A lot of these teenagers getting their first opportunity to compete at the Bonsai Pipeline and an opportunity to make a name for themselves put their name on the surfing map with a victory here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Dreams are made right here on the sands of Eukai. And with that, Sal, you can take it away. Welcome to the jewel of the North Shore for the 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro. We are straight into it right now. Pipeline is pumping. And right on cue, Nathan Florence driving through a beautiful little backdoor gemstone. Nathan Florence in position, slides into this beautiful barrel, coming out with a spit. Oh, he was locked in high, right in the right spot to come out of that one. Here we go up and riding in red. Whoa. Whoa. Full timer howling out of that barrel. Ryder Guest dropping in, perfect pipeline, threading the needle, double barrel section, coming out. Look how steep and tall this wave is, Kote. It is picture book out there. Oh. Here we go, Nathan Florence in green. Oh, Salati. Yes. Backdoor magic right there. Pipeline is not kind, as you can see by these wipeouts. And young Makai Burdine, 14 years of age, choosing to wear that helmet for safety and performing well here in round one. But the legend, Hawaiian royalty, young Koa Rothman, showing uh, really how important it is to build a relationship with Pipeline and put in the time, making these treacherous 10-footers look almost easy. We are just getting started here in round one. Mother Nature has so much more in store for us. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. The Vulcan Pipe Pro, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series, is sponsored by Yeti, built for the wild, by Flexfit, the one and only original, by DJI, unleash your other side, and by Vulcan, true to this. We've seen our fair share of wipeouts over the decade at the Volcom Pipe Pro. This year, Volcom and Sustainable Surf are planting a sea tree for every wipeout we see this year. This will help wipe out our carbon footprint from the event. Hey, Tina, why don't you tell us a little more about that, huh? Oh, I love it. So Volcom taking things one step further and adding a little twist to sustainability. And as those Volcom houses were telling you, they will plant a tree into the water with every wipeout. And they're mangrove trees. And the whole idea is because they can be five times more efficient at removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than rainforest. And then they also create an atmosphere for sea life. So Volcom, leave it up to them, wiping out carbon emissions one wipeout at a time. Thank you, Tina, for dropping that sustainability science. We're going to have a mangrove forest by the time this thing is over because pipeline is pumping. And, of course, in round two, the local masters get after it. You see Mikai McNamara. So remember back in 2016, all the way from the early rounds, surfed his way to a third-place finish at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Get around this first big section straight into the pit. A nice, clean exit. 
See how he just stalled once he got to the bottom there? Like, that's good wave knowledge right there. And the outer arm drag, I mean, that right there is very subtle, but extremely technical. You gotta take it heat by heat, like they all say, but then you also gotta have that goal of winning, you know? We go red crystal ball to Cole. Oh, beautiful pipe wave front side. He's coming out. Oh, look at that. I mean, that's just got to be the best feeling ever, especially being able to make it look that casual. Mason, here we go, over the big boil there. He gets so high in those things, just to know he get all that speed to bust out of those barrels. I mean, when he's jumping up and down on those waves at the end, I mean, you know he's having fun. If I had no schedule, maybe just a surf trip coming up or something, or free, no contest coming out, I, I would just paddle out and surf it. It's a beautiful day out at Pipe. We all live for this. Here we go, White Mason Ho grabbing rail, stalling, coming out with the spit. That was sick. I just love doing that. Usually when I get one normal nice one, I usually try to get a nice cross grab one. Here we go, Ayala Stewart, nice and deep. Oh. Right in the pit. Here we go. From that angle, he wasn't coming out from that I angle. I was coming up with something else to talk about halfway through that barrel. That was incredible. You always got to make a special relationship with Pipeline. Once you like start to know her, then she'll give you waves. It was beautiful surfing. I mean, look at that, Chris. Steep, deep. He's going to be pumping into this wave. One, two, and he's there. He's behind that section. He's so deep there. That's why he even came out. He was baffled like, wow, that thing was crazy. I think Lahiki is an underrated surfer in Waves of Consequence. He always stands out when the waves get like this. Love this kid's style. Here we go. Makua Kai Rothman with priority with a beautiful pipe barrel oh. coming out of it. And with a bow at the end. Makua Kai Rothman completely gone from vision, comes out with the spit. Round three hits the water when we return, including Maui's own Tanner Hendrickson and the pride of Santa Cruz, John Mel. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. This wave coming in. Go, 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 go. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro, and I am your host, Sal Masichella. From its roots in early Polynesian culture to modern day, very little has actually changed in the art of surfing. You grab your surfboard, you find a wave, and you put both your courage and your skills to the test. But with the evolution of surfboards and the ability to better forecast those waves with new technologies, surfing as a sport has become more competitive than it's ever been before. But as with all competitive sports today, not only has just the equipment evolved, but the athletes themselves have to discover new ways to train their bodies and their minds to be in peak condition in the ocean. Previously, you could surf and you could swim, and that was all the training you needed to be a competitive surfer. But now, these athletes are constantly looking for new ways to get an edge on land in their training. On the North Shore, there is one man who is providing a very unique way to help these water warriors evolve. My name is Kid Peligro. I'm a fifth degree black belt in jiu-jitsu and a certified level three Janaska natural instructor. And I train professional surfers how to get better at surfing. One, two, rock back, jump up. What Janaska natural does is it uses a lot of body movement, like it would be a yoga with movement and I incorporated a lot of breathing with the movements. The breathing part is super important because when you wanna move fast, you gotta breathe out. If you breathe in, you're slow, but if you wanna move fast, you go long move, fast move, touch kick. When I'm training them, I get them just a little tired so they're a little easier to get confused and then I move them in ways they're not expecting. Go right. Up left. So with that, they get the reaction times much better and, and they really learn how to adjust their body. So if they hit a bump in the wave, they're not completely, oh, what do I do? No, they just naturally know how to adjust their body. So when I started training John John, he specifically says, I don't train, I just surf. So I'm like, Kah. so he comes to me and he has no idea what to do. He just was a little 
stiff, a little not used to, to adjusting his body. And then he started feeling better and moving and stuff. And they have way more flexibility and the ability to contort their bodies better and have power where they are. Oh when they buy into the program, there's a confidence that goes way high. With that confidence, they believe in what I'm saying and they, be, they start believing in themselves more. Their surfing gets better and then they really want to stay here. They keep coming back, so it must work. And there we see two-time world champion John John Florence on the left, recovering from a knee injury, coaching up his younger brother, Nathaniel Florence, who is still in this event in what is a absolutely pumping round three. Day two of the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Makai McNamara weaving and driving. Oh, come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I have the gnarliest butterflies before. I think it takes like time off my life, just the stress I have before heat. Stress and perfection. I mean, this is what these guys are competing for, the opportunity to do this. But they don't want to do this. Cleland just grabbing rail on the takeoff, slotted right oh. through. Locking in, grabbing rail, and spat out. Max Beach on the forehand at Pipeline, pulling in, coming out of that one. Well, let's see Geronimo pulling straight in at back door, driving through, finds a clean exit. Vargas looking back door again on a bomb. Here he goes, pulling straight in, driving through, disappearing. Can he come out? He does. Here goes Tanner Hendrickson in the barrel, traveling. And he's coming out. I learned from a young age from Hank Gaskell. He's just told me, look at, you know, if you can't go out into a heat and battle with your friends and put it to the side afterwards, then you shouldn't be doing this as a surfer, right? Controlling your speed inside the barrel for maximum points. This is how you do it. Anthony Walsh putting on a clinic at back door. John Mel. Weaving, driving, there's the exit. The second one I got was probably the best pipe barrel I ever got. I'm so stoked to get those two barrels. That's basically all I could ask for is being able to surf the comp out here and getting these amazing waves. It's the best feeling a surfer could ask for. Thus the phrase, only a surfer knows the feeling. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. This is a public service announcement from the Volcom Houses. If you don't got Aloha, you gotta go, brah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series from the seven mile miracle known as the North Shore of Oahu. The fans packing themselves in tightly here at Pipeline in this arena-like setting. Round four, heat one. These are the dying minutes of this heat. These guys all want to advance. Makai McNamara focused, looking for an opportunity. You see a shot of his dad watching from the Volcom house, but Finn McGill with priority makes great use of it on this backdoor wave. Stalls just enough to get a nice little barrel and put himself way in the first place, meaning that Makai McNamara needs a huge score to advance. But with priority, he goes. Nathan Florence, though, further down the line, doesn't see Makai, drops in on him for an interference. Now, if Makai McNamara had made that wave, would he get the opportunity to score? We will never know. Controversy on the beach. Both surfers don't advance. Tina Dixon with more. And guys, a quick update on that Nathan Florence and Makai McNamara heat. Uh, Makai was actually up here talking to contest director Marty Thomas, and he was explaining, this is the only contest that matters to me. And with that interference, he basically lost the opportunity to get that high scoring wave and move on in the rest of the event. Now, some other sports athletes do get a chance to redo, but not surfing. So overall, it's just a tough situation and neither guy is going to move on. You hate to see it. There's Makai's older brother, Landon McNamara, giving a few more words to Nathaniel. Well, the rest of round four, pure perfection. Here we go, surfer in blue, Sully Bailey, former champion, back door, he finds the exit. The back door thundering right now. Oh, epic right there from former event champ, Sully Bailey. Pipeline is absolutely firing. Oh! 
Wiggly Dantist. Man, his reputation in any surf is one of absolute tenacity. Of course, Seth Moniz not afraid to strike quick and strike fast. Look at him driving through this double section. Get you some. Whew. Mr. Moniz perfectly parked in the pit. <laughs> Back door belongs to Billy Kemper, and Kemper comes out. Oh, yeah. Mate, Billy Kemper is Hansel. He is the hottest surfer in the world right now. Josh Moniz seeking out some backdoor shade, and the Hawaiian comes screaming out. All right, the 2018 Vulcan Pipe Pro champion, Josh Moniz grabbing rail, squeezing through that barrel. Big action here at Pipeline for the Vulcan Pipe Pro. It was all Jack Robinson from the jump of this heat. Textbook, perfect tube riding going both ways. Jack Robo's on a good one. Jack Robo is always on a good one. He's so cool and calm. What is he, 21? This is 21 Jump Street. Watch him just jump over all those bumps in that wave. Jack Robinson definitely had this heat from the beginning to the end, never looking back. The young man from Margaret River. And this was a huge statement. One of the highest scores of the entire event. Aritz Aramburu, the veteran. He loves to get tubed, and it shows. All right, here we go. Connor Coffin grabbing rail in the pit, driving through, comes out. Oh! How about that? Get out the Yeti coolers for Connor Coffin. <laughs> that was unbelievable. If that ain't a 10. Wow, that's a straight 10, surely. Bang, there it is. There it's it in. is. First 10 of the Vulcan Pipe Pro to Connor Coffin. What are you talking about with that drop? Oh my goodness, no. How did he get over that wobble <laughs> through the section? <laughs> and the big old claim to just kapa. We were starving for a 10, and Connor Coffin delivers. What else does the Vulcan Pipe Pro have in store for us? We're going to find out more perfect pipeline in round five when the Red Bull Signature Series returns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is our 11th year running of the 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro. <laughs> wow! Hey, boy, don't go anywhere. The next heat looks pretty nuts. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. We are on the North Shore of Oahu, Hawaii for the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Surfing is an activity that can be enjoyed by anyone with access to both the ocean and a surfboard. On my days off at the Volcom Pipe Pro, you can find me in the Pacific Ocean testing my own skills. But to be a professional surfer at the highest level, specifically a champion, you have to master the skill of surfing, which is more than just simply talent and standing on a surfboard. A true surfer has to build a relationship with the ocean, read the conditions, study currents, the winds and the tides, select the proper board, and most importantly, you have to be consistent and dedicated, spending hours upon hours in the actual ocean. If it takes 10,000 hours to master an average skill, then imagine how many are required here on the North Shore to be a master at Pipeline. It is very safe to say that all champions, past and future, have three things in common in Hawaii. They are dedicated, they are brave, and they know that mastery is an actual lifelong journey. Pipeline, the way we're out here today, I don't think I've seen a particular day that has really resembled another particular day, and I've been coming here for like 12 years. That's just what makes it so challenging is the changes more than any other wave in the world, I feel like. It's probably the hardest wave to compete at. All you're thinking about is the wave coming, and then when it comes, like, are you in the right position? So it's really stressful. There's a lot of hard work that goes in behind the scenes, training, preparing mentally, putting time in the water. There is a lot of cross training that surfers are bringing into surfing. I have a strength and conditioning coach in town. I do a lot of yoga and stuff outside of it and just trying to keep it calm. It's way more mental than physical. You can't think about the wipeouts because once you start thinking that stuff, I swear it just like comes to you almost. <laughs> 
It can be lights out in one second. The injuries that are coming out are some of the biggest ones we've seen in our sport. It is really difficult to shake that off. It can scare you to death because you are risking your life out there. There's a huge mental game that goes into it and up here is what wins world titles. For a pipeline, the best thing to do is just surf out here as much as you can. Someone said in sport before, it's 10,000 hours before you can really call yourself a professional at it. Putting time in the water here is a massive factor of, of winning this event. To be successful out here, you just gotta stay committed. Yeah, I pretty much focus all my energy every day at this wave. It takes years and years of just pretty much just showing up and slowly you work your way up and get respect from other surfers and get your waves. You start to learn what a really good wave looks like and also what isn't such a good wave. What would it mean to win here again? Going back to back, that would be even better. To hoist that Warrior Trophy, you have to be able to negotiate all types of conditions at Pipeline. And after three days of perfection, this fourth day, well, deteriorating conditions. It's going to change the way uh, the surfers approach this wave. A tough call to even run the event for Marty Thomas, but with worse conditions in the forecast, we have to go. For more on what that means, we turn it over to Tina Dixon. The finals day, things are going to be pretty challenging for these guys. The winds have come up, swells all over the place. In fact, some of the waves look more like a beach break. But the judges, they still are going to be looking for that barrel. But things like airs and turns may come more into play. And keep in mind that the judges do adjust their scale from 1 to 10 based on what the waves are doing that day. So a 5 in previous days could be more like an 8 today. Thank you, Tina. New conditions, new game. Who's going to be well-rounded enough to make their way to the quarterfinals? Right from the beginning, Chris Cote said we're going to see every aspect of surfing that these guys have to offer. Yago Dora and Eli Hanneman went to the bag with a mix of turns, airs, and just making the best of what these waves have to offer. Only six names have won this event since 2010. Solomon Bailey, 2017 winner, came out in this heat looking to remind you why he got this win with that rare pipeline wave. But it was Finn McGill taking advantage of his Pupukea roots and just going ham on this backdoor zone. Matt McGillivray with a cheeky little fade to big smash here. And then hold up, a little bonus section on the back end. And look at this load up on the bottom turn for Finn McGill. And then right here, just buries the rail. He was in rhythm. And with that, Soli Bailey, our 2017 champion, unable to advance. That is a shocker. But the man from Ubatuba, Brazil, Wiggly Dantes, with the deadly backhand showing us that he can get it done at Pipeline as well as Backdoor. He is in rhythm. Now take a look at Evan Geiselman in red to the right of your screen paddling out. He just gets decimated trying to duck dive uh, this solid six foot wave to the point where the wave breaks Evan Geiselman's board. What does a surfer do in that situation of a busted stick? Busted stick! So what's the protocol when a surfer breaks a board? Well, obviously they have to come back in and get a new one. In fact, you'll actually hear the beach announcers calling for the caddy or the coach to bring their surfer a new board. Now, the surfer is allowed to get a jet ski assist on days like this that are really challenging and big. But once they get to the beach, they grab their new board. But the whole thing is they got to paddle back out. That takes energy. It takes time. On days like this, we're going to see a lot of broken boards. Not ideal, but it happens. Thank you, Tina. And Evan Geiselman proving that he has what it takes despite a broken board. Gets this nice little pipeline wave and then says hello to this oncoming section with the blowtail and says to the judges, yeah, I'm moving on. Seth Moniz also on a tear, taking advantage of the many, many hours that he puts in out here at Pipeline. Varying conditions, no problem for Seth. Nice big smash here at the end of this wave. And then finding barrels, really on a day when there's not many of them. Seth Moniz looking for that trophy. 
that his brother Josh Moniz has. And Josh says, well, baby brother, you move on. I'm going to move out of my heat, too. I'm not going out without a fight. And this is where uh, Josh showing that you got to be crafty on a day like today at Pipeline. And at the end of his heat, defending champion Jack Robinson, who's just qualified for the World Championship Tour, unable to find a wave. And he does not move on. An absolute shocker and disappointment for young Jack Robbo. So it will be Wiggly Dantas and the Moniz brothers joining our final 16 in the quarters. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series for the 11th edition of the Vulcan Pipe Pro here on the North Shore. Well, not just surfing at Pipeline, skateboarding going down in a big way as Zion Wright, Alex Sorgente, and this man, Chris Russell, putting on a demo for the local crowds, giving away some wheels and gift cards, and just really taking the time with the local skate community here on the North Shore. Tina got a chance uh, to catch up with Alex Sorgente, who enjoyed his time at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Alex Sorgente, professional skateboarder out here, finally getting a chance to see Pipeline work. Uh, give us your thoughts on this contest. Oh my God, I was so stoked, you know, just to actually be able to come out here and see all the pros do their thing out at Pipeline. It was, uh, it was definitely like a dream, you know, to me to just be able to see that. And um, yeah, super stoked to come out here and just watch all the boys get blown out of insane barrels. It was pretty nuts. <laughs> There's a respect between athletes. Uh, what are you most impressed with with these guys? Oh, I mean, all these guys, all the pro surfers out there, like, they're so gnarly. Like, I can't imagine, like, dropping in on a 10-foot on a set out at Pipe. And, uh, you know, I, I, give, I give it up to those guys. Though. They're so gnarly. And, you know, I feel like, I feel like they, they have respect for us, what we do on skateboards and, you know, slamming on concrete. But these guys definitely got a whole, like, mountain of a wave crashing on them over, like, a foot of, a foot of a water onto dry reef. So, like, it's super gnarly. Uh. But, I mean, yeah, I guess it goes hand in hand, you know. I guess, you know, a lot of guys that uh, that surfers that skate too, I feel like they're really good at doing airs and stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, like skaters that surf and surfers that skate, you know, it goes like, goes hand in hand with, <laughs> with each other. <laughs> and I know you've had a couple fun days out there. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the contest. Yeah, thank you so much. So much fun. All right, let's get into it. It's quarterfinals time. Quarterfinals heat number one, Yago Dora, Leandro Usuna, Finn McGill, and Cristobal de Col, an international super heat. And fittingly so, because when we get to the quarterfinals, we know that's when things escalate. And Leandro Usuna now, beautiful bottom turn, top turn combination, another savage, deep bottom turn, vertical snap. Check out this split of the peak. I heard a bunch of screams coming off the beach, and this could have been why the young man just belting that lip. Leandro Usuna, barrel, snap, carve. That was why we heard those screams. We were wondering when somebody was going to crack this heat wide open. I think Lele's just done it. And just like that, score comes through for Yago Dora. 4-2-7, just enough. He jumps up into second place. Quarterfinals heat number two is up now. Wiggly Dantas, Eli Hanneman, Evan Geiselman, Matthew McGillivray. We're spanning the globe for this heat. It seems to be that Matthew McGillivray's knowledge of this wave happens to be his power. Speaking of power, from Uba Tuba on his backhand, bashing the lips and making it through to the semifinal. Well, the semifinals are starting to stack up, but this next heat is a hammer. Quarterfinal number three, featuring Seth Moniz, Jao Chianka, Nolan Raposa, and Aritz Aramburu. Joao Chianka taking advantage of the few opportunities with a nice cover-up here at Backdoor. And he is able to advance. Seth Moniz battling not only Pipeline, but Legacy finds a rare pipe gem, and he advances. 
my dad won it, my brother won it, and so I'd love to win it and get that, have that trophy at my house too. But yeah, it's a really a special event. Aron Baru off the bottom, grabbing rail, tucks inside, goes through a section, makes it. Carve on the backhand, needs a 5.58 on that ride. The horn's gonna blow, and it's gonna be up to the judges and the last effort for Aritz Aron Baru to determine the next two are moving into the semifinals. We're waiting for those scores. Hey, you got those scores or what? I've been trying, I just can't get it to work. Hey, what's up with the scores from that last set, but? You gonna give me some scores or what? That 3.87, not enough for Aaron Buru, so it'll be Seth Moniz and Joao Chianca advancing. New heat in the water, quarterfinal number four, all set up. Cam Rich is in the red jersey, John Mel's in blue, Emai Kalani DeVault representing the Valley Isle of Maui, and 2018 champ Josh Moniz in the green jersey. Oh, Cam Richards is putting on some effort. Nice barrel and a couple of y'alls to finish. South Carolina represent off to a speedy start with a good looking wave and a great performance. Josh Moniz forces his way in and out of a backdoor barrel. Foamy carve going for the finish. Hangs on through some turbulent water. Backing this one up, Richards through a little foamy section. And again, attacking after the barrel, putting the combo on, looking like he's got the pace out here at Pipeline. Here we go, Surfer and Green, Joshua Moniz, Falcon Bike Pro former champion, coming out of this wave. Chalk that up for the former Pipe Pro champion, Josh Moniz, yet another barrel. Sound of the horn, rounds out quarterfinal heat four. That's gonna be the 2018 champ, Josh Moniz paddling his way in and preparing himself for the semifinals where he'll meet his younger brother, Seth. It'll be a Moniz house divided. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hey, Sal Masekela here. Everybody's talking about the surfers looking for an edge out at Pipeline. But at the end of the day, it's all about the commentators and their edge. What's mine? Well, I'm commentating the entire Vulcan Pipe Pro from inside of this ice bath. Optimal commentary performance. You're welcome. Thank you, Drew Tunes, and welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. Now you see you gotta keep your kids safe here. Pipeline is treacherous. Uh, before we get into the semis, we're gonna hang out with our 2010 champ, Jamie O'Brien, and see how he gets optimal performance out of his pipe boards. The process on picking out the right surfboard for the right day is actually a really big decision I have to make. That's why I have over 150 surfboards. You know, I could walk down here in the morning and be like, all right, I'm gonna ride a 6'4", and I just know the number in my head. It's because I've surfed Pipeline so many times, and I know that's the board I need to go pick out. You know, it's paddle power. You wanna feel like lightning fast off the bottom, but you still gotta get into it. So at Pipeline, we ride rounded pins like this. They're pulled in like this, so there's one point of release. So the board's gonna generally be faster. Definitely the most important part of this board right here is right in the chest. So when you're paddling for a wave and you're pushing down in your chest, hoping you're gonna get the wave, you're really relying on the meat that's right here. Once I get it moving, this board executes and rides as good as any board in the world out there. So a lot of my pipeline boards are a thruster set up like this. Lock the fins in. This is my favorite way to ride a board at pipeline. This is what a quad fin setup looks like. So you'd run two fins here and then two fins here, pretty much riding a quad fin over 15 feet all day long. Under 15 feet, I'm riding a thruster. I spent a lot of time down here looking at surfboards and I never dreamed of having a garage, so pretty psyched on this. Thank you, J.O.B., for that tour. His garage is every surfer's dream. Sadly, J.O.B. not here on finals day, but the question is, which surfer is going to choose the right board that will lead them to glory? Eight men still in it. Semi-final number one in the water. Chris Cote, let's go. Very excited about the semifinals we have set up for you today. Semifinal heat number one, Leandro Usuna from Argentina, Iago Dora from Brazil, Matthew McGillivray repping South Africa, and Wiggly Dantes from Brazil. This is a huge heat. 
Chris Cote here with Von Blakey. Ooh. We are excited to start it off, and so is this guy, oh. Wiggly Dauntus. Whoa, I was just about to ask you who you thought had momentum running into the semifinal. Wiggly out of the gates and blasting it. Yeah, that answers your question right there. So known, of course, for his powerful whips, Wiggly Dauntus. What a way to start the semis here. Again, you got Wiggly Dantes, probably one of the most powerful surfers on the planet, and he does it with precision, Bemi. His backhand is a fire hose. When it gets up there, he absolutely destroys lips and just sends rain all across the Pacific. This guy is an absolute demon. <laughs> I thought it was actually raining, but those were three turns that made it feel like it was raining. That was huge. Th those three in a row, and not just the power, the combo, the flow, he just linked it together. We haven't seen a wave put together that smooth today. And what I've been loving as we've watched this day progress is how busy everyone's getting. The passion is starting to really fire up and no one has been more passionate than this, this guy. Deep fade for Leandro Osuna. Looked like he was maybe thinking left, opts right, finds a little tube on the inside. Cool little wave oh, there for nice. Leandro Osuna. Now that was a wave that didn't look like it had much on offer, but I like that he kept with it because that thing paid off in dividends. Got a little tuck in, big finish. Not gonna match the number put up by Wiggly Dantas, who starts this heat with an eight. As we see Lele here, that's his nickname for the guys on tour. Nice first hand carve, front hand carve. Comes around another deeper carve, gets a little barrel. Uh, and a nice little finish here, so well done. Look at that big pump, like, wow. That was awesome. Yeah. I love, you know, the, the purist in me loves the look of that opening fade. I mean, that was beautiful, the way he faded all the way around that big whitewater section. Wiggly Dantas sitting on that eight, in the lead. Watch oh. out, late drop for Matthew McGillivray. Oh, the power. It's still there. Somehow. Matching power for power. How did he make that and stay standing through all that tornado effect of White Walk? Well, he's just pure talented. I mean, the guy qualified last year for the WCT this year, and I think he's going to be hes going to be a shock of a lot of people. This guy really has an amazing forehand. He's, he has a treasure chest of amazing maneuvers he can go to, and he's going to make people explode in heats. Yeah, and super consistent. As we see Yago Dora going to the air, as he does, this guy can turn ones into eights. <laughs> and he's still and he, going. Look at him. Snapping it there. He, know, had, he had a bit of a slow quarterfinal, Bemi. Did you watch that one? I did. I was there, and I sometimes said to Yago, he can have those. Um, if he sees a left, if any kind of left at all, he can have the blinkers on. <laughs> That's he, all goofy footers, yeah, mate. <laughs> he can have the blinkers on and go, I don't see the right. There's no right there. And I said, Yago, there is a right-hander out there, and it's pretty good, you know. <laughs> But, <laughs> I mean, look at the guy. He, he's, he's, he's explosive. I mean, everything about Yago is just, as we see someone taking off the right. <laughs> he was looking at Leandro going, yeah. what are you doing? Good, oh, that's what happened. You. Yeah. <laughs> but Yago, I mean, this, this guy, he, he's such a pleasure to have on the team. He's, uh, as, he's, he's not only his surfing is explosive, he's an explosive human being. He's a pleasure to be around. And um, I couldn't wish him more well. I hope he wins this whole event. Now we're looking at potential for Wiggly Dantas. Watch out, he's already got an eight. Oh, there's a four. He's gonna add more to that. Yep, there was a, well, he left 50% of that score in the lip right there. Nice setup turn to start. A rare fall for Wiggly Dantas. This guy is super consistent. He's been doing it for 10, 15 years at this level. So it's rare to see him fall like that. Second score of green, a 257. Green, you're in first. Red, you're in second. Six minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Semi-final one. Up next, we've got two more heats to go. Semi two. Yago on a rare right-hander. And don't forget how good this guy's backhand is. Bemi, uh, before he went out there, you and Riddle were actually talking about it. Yago, don't forget, there are rights out there. The high number, almost the highest number of the day, from Wiggly Dantas came through with a right and on turns. 
All right, back to business here. Wiggly Dantas in the lead with an eight and a two, five, seven. Yago Dora has scratched his way into second place, throwing everything in his bag of tricks. And here we go, this could be a game changer. Matthew McGillivray stalling oh. on a huge backdoor pit and straight into it. Give the kid some credit, give him some points for the attempt. That was insanity for Matthew McGillivray. That was one of the better waves we've seen, one of the biggest backdoor bombs of the day. That was a huge one. Plant more trees, give him five trees for that one. He was just sending that one for glory. So with that, We've got two finalists, both from Brazil, Wiggly Dantas and Iago Dora. Leandro Usuna, third place. Matthew McGillivray, fourth place, but winning the respect of everybody with those last two waves. Thank you, Chris. The Brazilian storm still at full power. Who will join Iago Dora and Wiggly Dantas in the final? You'll find out when we return. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. I'm Kaipo Guerrero, and you're watching the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Hit it, boys. Volcom Pipe Pro. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series for the 11th running of the Volcom Pipe Pro. Standing there in the middle, that is the legend Tony Moniz, who won this event years ago. He'll be watching this semi intently as his two sons, Josh, the 2018 Volcom Pipe Pro champ, and Seth currently on the world tour. They're in this semi taking on Joao Chianca of Brazil and Cam Richards from South Carolina. But before we get into this semi, we'll check in with Kaipo Guerrero and Wiggly Dantas. I just want to catch you straight out of the water. You are runner up in 2014 here. You're in the final again. How are you going to do one better in 2020? Oh, I'm going to try to do my best. Uh, almost hurt my knee this morning, but uh, feeling good. Kelly won the year, got second. But uh, my goal is one here in pipe. I love this wave. And uh, I want to thank all the local boys let me get waves all these years. And thank you, Uncle Eddie. Oh, Hoffman family. Hello, Dahui. There you go. We're gonna get Wiggly. Get ready for the final, guys. Volcom Pipe Pro, semifinal number two in the water. Thank you, Kaipo. And talk about a guy who ha has worked hard as we hold, hold the phone. Cam Richards coming in behind this cute little pipeline number. He wanted that thing to be a little bit deeper, but man, it did look pretty in that in that light. I'll tell you, the Sly Mongoose out here at Pipeline playing pocket pool on a beautiful little wave on a day that's been super challenging. This thing is just really, really dreamy. Sparkles. You get a little shot from behind. Yeah, I just wanted to probably be just a bit deeper. But Cam has been a hunter out here finding all sorts of waves. How about, how about the Hunger Games uh, with Seth Moniz and Josh Moniz? Josh, of course, already having um, one of these warrior trophies. And Seth telling us, I've had to walk by that trophy in some way, shape, or form my entire life. As Josh Moniz just gets ejected as he leaned into the bottom dropping out of that backdoor wave. That was interesting. Neither one of them had priority. And Chanka opting to pass up, giving the local boy the wave and picking up a gem behind it. How's oh, that little bonus double tap? Frisky feet, Joao Shianka. With those two turns. And if you're wondering how shallow it is at inside back door, there you see, thigh deep. Somebody asked me earlier, uh, it was Kaipo, and goes, how deep do you think it is right there at back door right now? I said, it's about a foot. And there it is, illustrated quite well. And outside, it's not much deeper as well. Definitely want to go feet first. That was psycho. Look at how much ocean was just waiting to eat him. Look at this section here. Nice work from Joao Shianka getting that little barrel and two little turns to boot. Oh, 
Well, six, only six names out of the, in the last 10 years here at the Volcom Pipe Pro. Of course, John John Florence, 2011, 12, 13, and 15. Kelly Slater, 2014 and 16. Jamie O'Brien uh, in 2010. Soli Bailey, who got knocked out earlier today in 2017. Josh Muniz, who we're watching on screen in 2018. He'd like to do it again. And Jack Robinson, who will not be def successfully defending uh, that title. You need full recovery just to make it from one wave back out into the lineup, especially if you want to conquer the pipeline. Oh, foam ball dancer to body surfer. Seth Moniz, I believe, as we're, we're seeing a little flurry here on these pipeline wide ones. Josh says, not. Nah, I don't want any part of that. Hold the phone. Joao Shianka takes advantage of that ride back out. That was mental. This guy's not afraid. Best thing about Joao Shianka is that he hasn't been talked about all day, flying in under the radar. And as you said, taking the escalator back around. All that water is swooping across the inside reef but meanwhile, on the outside reef, an absolute elevator drop down into the mine shaft comes out to the cheers of the crowd. Literally free falls, sticks that back foot above the fins and just gets a beautiful, very sketchy. Very, I'm going, I'm going close to excellent on that ride for that sure. I mean, that the beautiful thing about it is that wave wasn't that big when he took off and then it just grew and it just went probably a lot wider than it was taller. That was a legit cave. 8.17 uh, for Joao. Seth Moniz, excuse me. Yes, yeah, Seth Moniz. Nice backdoor one and a great turn. Smash at the end. Little foam ball dance. That 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 wave of Seth's was, was which was gorgeous really puts into perspective the size of that Joao Shianka barrel. The size could only be matched by the size of his heart, which was definitely in his throat on that drop. But Mr. Moniz, not to be outdone, finds an absolute little gem, a diamond in the rough. And speaking of cutlery, does a great little slice himself right there in the back door lip. Seth Muniz with a nice, great, good score, 5.50. He's gonna appreciate all of that and look to back it back up. Well, at the outset here with just under two minutes ago, we talked about how storybook it would be to see the two brothers, Seth Moniz and Josh Moniz, whose father, Tony Moniz, won an iteration of this contest years ago. Josh, of course, with a ready with a trophy. If they could both make it into the final. Joao Shianka right now has this thing locked in first place. Cam Richards needs a seven to advance. He has priority. And for Josh Moniz to take his brother Seth out, he's looking for a 5.77. So if you're Seth here, uh, what's your move? Start hunting. Start throwing bait one way and then hunting the other. That's what you do. Uh, he definitely knows this reef, but you want to get away from Cam Richards because Cam Richards has priority and he's thinking the exact same thing. Guess what? Mr. Moniz has more knowledge of this wave. I'm going to sit next to him because he knows where the next one's going to come, right? But then he has priority. So get away from that kid. Cam Richards looking to roll the dice here on this pipeline wave. He's looking for a big score. Chuck's a little front side air. That is going to conclude his campaign. 30 seconds to go. Josh Moniz might get the opportunity. You see him looking for that 5.77. Congratulations uh, to Cam Richards on his epic week here at the Volcom Pipe Pro. 
Oh, Josh scratching and looking. Is he going to have enough time? 15 seconds. Interesting point. I'm not so sure that he actually wanted to get away from Cam. He might have just actually sold him that wave, hoping there was one right behind him. And that's why he's surfing this heat, and I'm not. Well, you know, for, for, for Dad, Tony Moniz loves both his sons. Stoked, of course, that Seth is going to be in the mix. Tina, we started with 144 surfers, and now we're down to four. And Sal, this is going to be a very interesting final. Three Brazilians, one Hawaiian, and that Hawaiian is Seth Moniz. His brother has won this event. His dad has won this event. Will this be his day? Well, it's a 75% chance that it's going to be a Brazilian. A Brazilian has never won the Vulcan Pipe Pro. We're gonna crown a champion when we return. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. This is a public service announcement from the Volcom Houses. Don't believe all the hype. You never know who's gonna win at Pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. Here we are, four days in a row, and it is finals time. And it's Brazil against the lone native Hawaiian. Wiggly Dantas, Iago Dora, Joao Chianca, and Seth Moniz with a whole ton of legacy on his back. And it is go time. Seth Moniz. And he thought about a second there and said, let me get this turn here at the end. Almost able to ride that out. Dave, have you seen uh, a change in Seth after his first year on tour, the rookie of the year? I thought his performance at Chopu was pretty much the stuff of legend. It just announced him as a guy who was going to be there for a long time, challenging, particularly in heavy water. What's he brought back to the North Shore after that year? Uh, you know what, just himself. That's the one thing is we here in Hawaii know him as a performer. We know him as being able to perform in oh. super heavy barrels. But speaking of the opposite end of the spectrum, oh. <laughs> Wiggly Dante starts throwing hammers. Yeah. I'm just laughing because he's just like, hey, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. That first turn was mental. Just smash mouth, Dante. Oh, cute, cheeky Joao Chianca continuing his little fade backdoor runs. Interesting. This is going to be cool to see the way the scale gets set. Hello. Right, because his first wave in his semifinal, he had a very similar wave. Oh, uh, the, the, the only weakness was probably that second turn, which was still solid, mm -hmm. but he got an eight on his opening ride in the semifinals. Yeah. Kind of curious where the judges are going to go with this. Well, I didn't even consider that second turn a turn. It just felt like a setup for the third. Boys, that is a full-blown Nooner alert. 12 o'clock, punched it so hard. The spray was outrageous. And even though that turn didn't quite have the same pizzazz as the first one, it linked beautifully into the last turn. So the flow is there, the power is there. Rakatoa, mate. You could hear that from miles away. That was a flawlessly surfed wave because even that second turn, instead of trying to manufacture a turn, he set that section up so that he could just go completely mental on that third turn. Like, that's, that's his ability to be like, oh, I see what this is going to do. I'm going to set myself up for a smash. Oh, come on. Oh, no! That's a... Is that a make? I... He was wrestling the foam ball the entire way, and he got out of there. I mean, he made it. There was a... The right came at him and punched him in the face, but he made it. There was, there was a backwash and no doggy door. I guess he could have ollied over the thing, but that would have been crazy. We got to watch that again. That was insane. I'm still picking my jaw <laughs> off the floor. This is amazing, and look how much he just slows down, starts sliding sideways on the foam ball, gone for all money, high up on the face. I think that could be a mate, guys. He came out and then jumped off. The, the judges have set a precedent where if it's not a really clean make, we have seen scores go low on those ones. 
look at the way he just puts on the e-brake right here and then says, you know I'm also a bull rider. I ride rodeos for a living. Let me, let me show you. Look at that thing. In my mind, honestly, I'm going right now full eight seconds. That was insane. There's people at home right now who are being like, that's not a full pull. And there's people who are like, yes, it was. Well, the home team says he <laughs> made it. Like, he claimed it. That's a make. Every single Hawaiian is dead set. That was a make. It reminds me a lot of a wave Kelly Slater got in early pipe comp here once. Do you remember that? He got a big throaty double up nugget just like that. Came flying out and sort of skated off over the back. But similar sort of make, right? 1991 Pipe Masters. That was an arrival wave, wasn't it? And I think that well, if the you look at Steph's, uh, sorry, at Seth's body language as he comes out, his hands are wide open. He's going, I'm here, I'm, look at me. Well, the judges, um, they said, nah. <sighs> Bummer. All four men have worked hard and tirelessly to put themselves in a position to hoist this warrior trophy above their heads. You wonder how much gas they even have left as the average surfer right now would be cramping in their shoulders and lats from the endless paddling. And they're just trying to put themselves in position for an opportunity to make the move that can add them to this list of champions. As Joao Chianca finds something here on the inside, smashes his first turn. On this little backdoor wave, another big rip. Beautiful surfing, lightning fast, really attacking that wave, just going, you know what? 5.48, I'm going to back the rail game here. I'm going to attack the lip. Yeah, there was no dejection as that wave showed that, like, okay, this isn't the best wave on earth. He's like, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever I can with it. And with 2 minutes 20, he's uh, sent a little message up to the sky just saying, is that enough? I don't know if that's enough. I, okay, put it this way. Four turns, even if he got one point or 1.5, it is enough, right? 1.5 would give him a six. Oh! Yago Dora. Chanka just jumped from third into second. Seth Moniz looking for a 6.34 to win this thing. Wiggly with priority. Seth scratching, can't get in. Very interesting. Wiggly went out and threw like big old sledgehammers. Mr. Chianka went out, on the other hand, with a ball peen hammer, but did four turns, and they're lightning fast. Is that enough? He doesn't need an eight. He needs a 5.5. Yeah, I think the size of the wave is going to work against him a little bit. Wiggly's wave just much steeper, bigger set, and really teed off on it. And even though. You know, he did everything in his power, Joao, but just a smaller wave. Lacerated it. Got a fall. Got a four for it. One point per turn. One point per turn. Some, I mean, jeez. I, I, I so wish I could get a four like that. <laughs> He's electrifying, isn't he? He really attacks it. And again, you know, just watching him link those turns. It's just flawless surfing. But I think size wave, really, that's what that's what crewed him there. Wiggly. 40 seconds to go. He's not going to change oh, this situation. There's a little here. There's a little tiny Seth, window. Seth Moniz with priority. Is there anything coming? 26 seconds. The boys are scratching at absolutely everything. Here goes Yago now. Off the bottom. Carves off the top. The section is not there. He finishes well, but what's he need there? A 707. That's not going to be it. And you see, slap in the water, Seth Moniz sees that there is no opportunity for him. He will not be able to carry the legacy forward. Oh, wow, Wiggly Dantes. With that, unless Yago did something that none of us saw, Wiggly Dantas is your 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro champion. Look at this guy winning this newly rated 5,000 point Volcom Pipe Pro. Wiggly Dantas getting chaired up the beach 
and he is as stoked as can be. The Brazilian domination as the dominant nation in professional surfing today continues. Oh, 100%. I mean, I know when the Cooley kids were on fire, it felt like surfing across our entire nation went to an entirely different level. Same thing with Brazil right now. We can see it happening in other countries as well. Japan isn't far off having a huge push. France has got a nice little run France, happening. Yep, uh, but honestly, Brazil, it, it's just undeniable how crazy it's going. Well, we can only say so much. We'll let Wiggly Dantas do the talking with Kaipo. That's right, thank you, Sal. We talked about before the final, Wiggly. 2014, you are a runner-up. You've done one better. You are the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro champion. How are you feeling? Feeling super good. Uh, I want to thank my family, all my sponsors, my girlfriend, all my friends, and uh, everyone coming here on the beach support. Thank you, Volcom, to make a make event. That's my goal for many years, won this event. For me, this, this wave is like a special wave in my life and um, I want to say thank you everyone. I don't have words to say, but I come here for this one. Wiggly Dantes, your 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro champ. With that, take it away, Sal. Another year here in paradise at the ultimate proving grounds where mother nature has put these surfers to the test, creating yet another hero of the North Shore of Oahu as Wiggly Dantes adds his name to the illustrious list of Vulcan Pipe Pro champions hoisting that coveted warrior helmet. In 2014, Wiggly Dantas made his way into his first Vulcan Pipe Pro final, but had glory snatched away by the GOAT, Kelly Slater. Six years later, he moves to the top spot, gets a big eight-point wave early, holding on through a grueling final. So, of course, Wiggly Dantas earns today's Red Bull signature moment. The Red Bull Signature Series travels from the warm island paradise of Hawaii to the snowy, majestic peaks of Vail, Colorado for the most progressive competition in snowboarding. The best men and women competitors on snow taking on the most progressive halfpipe and slope style courses ever. You do not want to miss this one. Be sure to join us for the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. Once again, thank you for joining us today. Be sure to follow us in any manner that you get social. On behalf of our entire crew here on the North Shore of Oahu, Hawaii, aloha and mahalo.